Joining me now is retired U.S. Army Green Beret Commander and former counterterrorism advisor to Vice President Dick Cheney, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Waltz. And Colonel, I mean, we have we have listened to the police all night talk about you know how this thing went down. That the van runs over people, the attackers get out with knives, and you know that in about two hours or so that the Prime Minister Theresa May will meet with her Cobra Group. She's going right. to meet with her her terrorism analysts, and they're going to want some answers. And, and there are not many answers right now to give. Well, it's interesting that Theresa May and MI5, the British uh, you know, counter domestic counterintelligence organization, gave a warning just in the wake of the Manchester attack that more attacks were imminent. And, and I would be curious to see if these cells were related. So right now, the police and MI5 are going through pocket litter. Fortunately, the suspects did not blow themselves up so they can see what uh, was on the attackers, where the vans came from, where they lived, if they had cell phones on them, who they talked to, and begin trying to take down the rest of that network as fast as possible. That's what's going on mm -hmm. tactically on the ground. You know, and I think it's worth noting, if we think back, uh, to, it's worth bringing up Edward Snowden, who exposed to the world the different types of software programs and the different types of apps and other uh, mechanisms right. that the NSA and GCHQ, the British counterpart, could not penetrate. And you're seeing these terrorist groups now be able to communicate. And it, it would not mm -hmm. surprise me if we're not able to penetrate those communications where you're seeing these accelerated attacks. And I think it's a fair point, but if you go back, you kind of touched on it earlier. I mean, look, yeah. they knew after the Manchester attack, they knew that something else was coming. So you raise the terror level to right. critical, their highest level, the first time in a decade they have done that. And then five or six days later, you lower it. So if you know something's coming, why are you lowering it? Do you think the threat was over? I mean, what's the, what's the reasoning behind that, Colonel? Well, you saw a series of, of takedowns in the wake of Manchester. They may have thought that they got most of, of those cells and missed one, frankly. But then, you know, you have to go to the broader issue of we can't shut down Western society. That's playing into the terrorist groups. You know, the other point that I'm, very, that I'm looking very closely at uh, is whether these attackers were homegrown, radicalized, or whether mm -hmm. they infiltrated in back from the sanctuaries in Syria and Iraq or other places. And I think this points to exactly why we cannot let these sanctuaries fester like we did over the last eight years in Syria in particular. And we have to be careful, you know, right now, Washington is going through its review of our strategy towards Afghanistan. And we're seeing some of these fighters as they're pushed out of Raqqa and they're pushed out of Mosul flow back to Western Pakistan and Afghanistan. We have to keep our foot uh, kind of on the gas militarily and on their necks militarily. So we cannot let you know, places like Afghanistan devolve back into chaos so that we have other sanctuaries for which these groups can launch attacks. Yeah, and it has been an ongoing battle and an ongoing argument that that very point, Colonel. But, you know, yeah. you, you listen to the London police, and in, in, in one sentence he says that we believe that all three attackers who were involved in this, we got all three of them. And then a little later on he says, but we want anybody who's got any videotape uh, on the London Bridge during the time of the attack, we would like to see that videotape. They think they've got all the attackers. What are they looking for with the videotape? Well, you know, with, with any type of additional evidence, they can essentially roll back the clock, so to speak. So they're going to look at the moments of the attack and then start kind of rewinding things to look at what routes were used. It may be even if someone saw them getting in the vans, if someone saw any type of kind of evidence that could, the police, MI5, the intelligence services can be, begin kind of pulling those threads, so to speak, to lead to, again, they want to, they want to take down as much of the network as possible. There are support mechanisms. There are people that helped them uh, get those vehicles. Where did they stay? Where did they live? Who did they mm -hmm. talk to? Who are the, uh, any relatives that they may uh, have spoken with? If they spoke with anyone overseas, uh, you know, they're, right. going to, they're going to pull all of those threads and any type of evidence that anyone can provide is going to help with that.
who owned the van, I mean, who was the driver, and, and you right. know, it, the, right. the, who put together these phony suicide vests with the canisters in there. I mean, doesn't it lead you to think, well, we thought this was so, in Manchester two weeks ago, you know, the authorities were saying, well, this was well organized, this was well thought out and well coordinated because of that bomb, and this one was just canisters, fake canisters, knives, and a van. Yeah, and it could have been that one was well organized and planned, plotted from abroad. You know, I still don't know if we've actually taken out the bomb maker, which is a critical asset to a lot of these terrorist groups because they're highly trained and prized individuals. And this could have just essentially been a, a copycat attack of homegrown uh, individuals or homegrown radicals that mm -hmm. were, you know, trying to get attention and were radicalized online by ISIS. So they may be related, they may not. Uh, you know, that's something that the police are running down and that uh, MI5 and others are running down as we speak. Last question, Colonel. Tomorrow morning, sure. do they raise the terror level in Britain again? Well, I think they should uh, and, and, and until they get to the bottom of how broad this network is, if there is a network or if it was just these three individuals. But again, I, I want to continue to make the point that we're going to find ourselves in attack after attack after attack until we have a broader strategy to undermine this ideological this ideology of Islamic extremism I think President Trump's visit to the Middle East and him putting mm -hmm. the finger rhetorically so to speak in the chest of a lot of Muslim majority governments to get after this problem ideologically until we take that long-term strategy very seriously and really uh, very aggressively I think we're gonna find ourselves facing these attacks for the foreseeable future yeah, and we're going to hear that echoed more and more in the coming days. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Waltz, Colonel, thank you.